Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, we're going to be talking through a couple player props I like on prize picks for tonight's NBA slate on uh, Saturday, March the 30th. Now for Saturday today, we just have three games. So it is a little bit of a smaller slate, but I still wanted to come on and give you guys a couple props I like for tonight. We've got two picks that we're going to talk about in this video that I do like. Um, and we're going to share why I like these plays now. Before we do get started, as always, if you guys do enjoy these prize picks videos and if they do help you out, make sure you hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to the channel and if you are new to prize picks, if you don't have an account over on prize picks, you can sign up uh, linked down below in the description or just make sure to use that promo code NOAH when you sign up for prize picks and you'll get your first deposit matched up to $100. And we do also have a partnership with Sleeper. You guys can check out Sleeper linked down below in the description as well. Or again, just use that promo code NOAH over on Sleeper. Get your first deposit matched up to $500. Now, if you don't know what Sleeper is, they are a DFS pickup map similar to Prize Picks, where you build out an entry, you pick over or under on player projections. Um, you know, it's really simple. Sleeper, you know, they have a lot of the, the, the major sports like NBA, NFL, MLB, um, NHL, you know, the college football, college basketball. Like you can take Props for all those sports over on Sleeper. You build out an entry, you can make up to an A pick entry, win up to 100x your money. If you guys do want to check them out, again, sign up, use that code NOAA, and you'll get your first deposit matched up to $500 over on Sleeper. Now, we've got two picks to talk about for Saturday for today. Now, I do want to recap the three picks we gave out in Friday's video before we talk through today's plays. So, Friday gave out three picks. We hit two out of the three picks we gave out Friday. Unfortunately, couldn't get the full sweep. Um, but we did hit on Miles Bridges over 19 and a half points. That line did get bumped up to 20 um, as I was making my video yesterday. But if you still took the over on 20 points for Miles Bridges, that did hit. He finished with 22 points. Uh, and then we did hit on Josh Giddy over 27 and a half PRA. Giddy once again had a really big game, uh, easily went over his PRA line. Unfortunately, though, uh, Miles McBride over 22 and a half PRA did not cash. McBride, he played huge minutes. The game went to overtime. Um, it was a really high scoring game against the Spurs, but he only had like 12 PRA. McBride played like 45 minutes. I think he had seven points, two rebounds, and three assists. Like he was not really doing much, you know, last night. I mean, he was kind of just doing some cardio out there. I think he only shot the ball like four times. Um, it was the Jalen Brunson show last night. I think Jalen Brunson had like over 50 points last night. So that was tough. You know, we got the minutes from McBride, just didn't get the production. But still two out of the three picks hit on Friday. So hopefully you guys were able to make some money. I usually recommend, you know, if I give out multiple picks, like three picks, usually you can, you know, you can play them as a, as a three pick power play that, you know, typically is not the best entry type though, to play on prize picks, three pick entries, you know, mathematically are not the best entry types to play. But if you do a three pick flex play, if you do, you know, if you mix and match into two pick entries on nights, like last night, when we go two out of three, uh, we hit two out of three plays, you know, it's not just a complete loss. You can still make some money back if you mix a match or, you know, you can pull a little bit of a profit if you do a three pick flex play. If you do three pick power play, that's fine. But just, you know, accept the fact that there will be nights like last night when we go two out of three. And you know, if you do a three pick power play, you don't win anything from that. So it's kind of your risk tolerance. You can play how you want. Also, if you want to add, you know, the picks I give out in my videos to some picks you like and make like a five pick entry or a six pick entry, that's something you can do as well. That's probably the best thing to do because those are mathematically the best entries types to play on prize picks, five and six pick uh, flex entries. But yeah, two out of three picks hit last night. Hopefully you guys were still able to make some money. Let's talk through the two picks I'm liking for Saturday. So we got two points props I'm liking for tonight. First one we're going to take a look at is going to be Kristaps Porzingis, 17 and a half points. I like the over here uh, for Porzingis. So let's talk through why I like this Porzingis prop. So you know, you look at Por uh, Porzingis' recent games, he's been, you know, coming close to going over this line. He's only gone over in three out of his last five games, but the two games he went under, he lost by the hook. He had 17 against Atlanta. I think that game, no, that, I thought that game might have been a blowout, but that was the game where Atlanta made like a crazy comeback. And Porzingis still played pretty, pretty big minutes in that game. But I think the, the game against Milwaukee, where he had 17 points, that game might have been a blowout. Um, no, it, that was a competitive game, but Porzingis only played 28 minutes, which is a little weird. Typically, in competitive games, we see Porzingis play like 33, 34 minutes. If you look at his recent games lately, so last game went to overtime against Atlanta, but he played 35 minutes in regulation. Uh, the game before that against Atlanta, he played 34 minutes. Now, this game against Detroit was a blowout. He only played 26 minutes. In a competitive game against Milwaukee, only played 28 minutes. That was a little bit weird. But like this game against Detroit, he did go over, but he only played 21 minutes. That was another blowout. 
Uh, but then against Denver, competitive game, 35 minutes. Against Cleveland, competitive game, 32 minutes. Blowout against Dallas. Uh, you know, somewhat of a blowout against Philadelphia. So we haven't really seen Porzingis. You know, there's been a lot of games lately where he has lost minutes because of blowout. I mean, this Celtics team, they are good. They do blow teams out a lot. But this is a spot against the Pelicans where we should see a competitive game here. The Pelicans have been playing really well lately. They're playing at home too. This game only has a six and a half point spread. So in a game with a six point spread, I think we can project Porzingis for 30 plus minutes here. And if you look at what Porzingis has done this season, when he's gotten full minutes over his last 25 games, playing at least 30 minutes, he's gone over this points prop in 20 out of his last 25 games. And he's gone over it in eight out of his last nine games. So typically... When we get 30 plus minutes from Porzingis, we can usually bet on him putting up 18 points or more. This matchup against the Pelicans, I don't think it's like the greatest matchup. I don't think it's the worst matchup either. I'm trying to see if these teams have played this season to see if Porzingis has played the Pelicans this year. I'm looking through his game log. Doesn't look like these teams have played yet this season from what I'm seeing. So this will be their first time matching up, or at least this will be Porzingis' first time playing the Pelicans this season. You know, the matchup against J-Val and Larry Nance, I don't think it's like a terrible matchup. I don't think it's like a great matchup for Porzingis. But Porzingis, we know, is going to have a good role in this offense. He's still going to, you know, cede some usage to Jalen Brown and to Jason Tatum. But, you know, we've seen Porzingis be a pretty good offensive player even for the Celtics. I mean, he's averaging just over 20 points per game this season. Like, this line is below his season average, which definitely feels like a little bit of a low line. I mean, I know the matchup, you know, the game environment might not be the best, but we can actually project Porzingis for 30 plus minutes here, which is something we typically can't do because this, you know, this Boston team, they're just, they're big favorites every night. It seems like, you know, they blow teams out a lot on the road against a good Pelicans team. This feels like a spot where, you know, we see a competitive game here. So if we're getting 30 plus minutes from Porzingis, I like our chances to get 18 points. And I was looking at some sportsbook odds, looking at Pinnacle specifically. Pinnacle, known to be like the sharpest sportsbook, they currently have Porzingis heavily favored to go over this points prop. He is minus 152 to go over 17 and a half points. So, so Pinnacle really likes the over here. Um, I like this over as well. That'll be our first prop for tonight. Chris Dad's Porzingis, more than 17 and a half points. Next prop I like, another points prop. We're gonna go to the Bucks and um, Hawks game, and we're gonna look at Malik Beasley's points prop of 13 and a half, and I like the over here as well for Malik Beasley. So Malik Beasley should have the opportunity to pick up some extra usage tonight with Damian Lillard out. Uh, Damian Lillard out for personal reasons, not exactly sure why he's out. Um, but Lillard will be out tonight. And if we look at what Malik Beasley has done this season with Lillard off the floor. So Lillard has been out for five games. Beasley's only gone over this points prop in two out of the five games without Lillard this season. But if you look at the games where he went under. So one game he went under against the Pacers. He played 29 minutes and had 13 points. Another game he went under against Orlando. He played 20 minutes, had zero points. He shot 0 for 4 from the field, 0 for 3 from 3. And then the other game he went under was against Minnesota. Really tough matchup. He only had three points. He shot one for 13 and 0 for 9 from three. So, you know, two of the games he went under were really tough matchups against Minnesota and Orlando, two of the best defensive teams in the league. The other game he went under against the Pacers, he lost by the hook. He had 13 points, uh, but he did put up 17 points and only 24 minutes against Utah. And then he put up 22 points and 36 minutes against Phoenix. Um, the last two games, though, without Damian Lillard, we've seen Beasley play big minutes, 36 minutes, 33 minutes. He should get big minutes here. I mean, he was already playing you know, pretty consistent minutes as a starter. Just looking over his last five games, 28 minutes, 31, 25, 40, and 33 minutes. The game he played 25 against OKC was a blowout, um, so you know, lost some minutes there. But typically in a competitive game, we can expect Malik Beasley to play about 30 minutes. And without Damian Lillard, that should free up some minutes for someone like Malik Beasley. And Beasley, you know, he is an offensive threat. He is a good three-point shooter. It's a really good matchup here against Atlanta. Atlanta defensively this season, they have not been good. They're they're playing at a top, you know, top five pace this season, and they rank bottom five, yeah, bottom five in defensive rating. So it's a really good matchup here for Malik Beasley. Uh, Atlanta's also been a really good matchup for shooting guards, giving up the most points per game to the shooting guard position. And we've seen Beasley kind of get hot lately. He's had back-to-back -back good scoring games. I like that to continue tonight, especially without Damian Lillard. If you do look at the on-off splits this season, Beasley has picked up the second highest bump in usage. Um, Beasley gets a 2.6% yeah, bump in his usage rate with Lillard off the floor this season, which is the second biggest bump on the team. The guy who benefits the most from a usage perspective this season without Lillard has been Chris Middleton. But we, do, we have seen Beasley pick up some extra usage 
with Lillard out of the lineup. I expect that to be the case tonight. Expect the minutes to be there. And typically when we get 30 plus minutes from Malik Beasley, I think we got a good chance at 14 points, especially in a really good matchup like this against Atlanta, and especially with Damian Lillard out of the lineup. And you know, talking about Pinnacle, we talked about how Pinnacle is heavily favoring the over on this, this Porzingis points prop. They're also heavily favoring the over on this Malik Beasley points prop. Right now on Pinnacle, Malik Beasley over 13 and a half points is minus 143. So Pinnacle heavily favoring the over on both Porzingis over 17 and a half points and Malik Beasley over 13 and a half points or you know more than 13 and a half points. So these are the two picks I like for tonight, guys. It's just a three-game slate, so obviously there's just you know, not a lot of props to choose from. But these were the two that I felt best about, you know, from you know what's on, on the board right now. As always, though, I will be giving out more Prop 6 plays for today. I do provide those over on Patreon. So if you guys enjoy these YouTube videos and if you want more Prop 6 plays from me, you can check out the Patreon linked down below in the description. But as always, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. Hit that like button down below if you did enjoy. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to Prospects, and if you don't have an account over on Prospects, use that code NOAA. When you sign up, get your first deposit matched up to $100. Uh, but good luck tonight, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, we will see you guys in the next video.